Hi, I'm El Gavalo Verta, or as English people call, huge lightning power. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna show you how to get that classic Iron Maidens somewhere in time and guitar sound, and also a little bit about the playing and the theory behind the Iron Maidens guitar arrangements. So this is also like in the style of Iron Maiden.
All right, that was somewhere in time my a version of it. So I programmed the drums and played the bass and guitars. <laughs> well, as you heard from that song and if and when you've listened to the album, the guitar sound is quite lushy. About the gear they used on the album, and I wasn't there, I don't know, but you know, most likely Super Strat and Adrian Smith has been known to use like Les Pauls and Explorers or now then. Well, I used my Tokai custom made Super Strat with EMG 81X and I think this is 89 or 60X, I don't remember, but you can, you know, split it. So these are like a little bit more open and not so compressed versions of 81 pickups. So a little bit in the, you know, passive pickup territory. And the Floyd Rose that is, you know, mounted to the body, it goes only down. The amp, classic Marshall 800, the settings are basically like I always have them most of the time. Uh, presence six and a half, bass full, mids six, treble six, master six, preamp full, and it sounds like this. Your basic. CM 800 sound, you know, not that much gain. And it goes to Sir Reactive Load IR, which where I have my trusty old Jens Bulgren's Sound of God EQ2 impulse response. And from there it goes to Steinberg's UR816C audio interface. And I'm recording it to Cubase and monitoring myself with my Genlike monitors. So, yeah, I mean, that's the basic sound. And obviously we want to add something more to it because that was a little bit, well, not too heavy. So what we do, we're going to add Super Overdrive. But obviously this isn't still yet the sound. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add just a little bit of chorus so that the chorus and the super overdrive hits the amp. So what happens? pretty close. So this is kind of the basic sound I used when I recorded the track. I know, you know, I read somewhere that they used Galen Kruger amp something, but live and most of their careers they have used Marshalls and especially on live the JMP1 preamp. I, I I've owned that back in the days and recorded a couple of albums, done, you know, quite many shows. Then I also have the Marshall Power Amp, which they use. So, you know, you can't go wrong with the Marshall. And what we're gonna do next, we're gonna go to my Cubase screen, Mixdown, so I can show you what else I did to get that lushy sound. Okay, so what do we have? Let's say we, we turn all these off and let's put them on one by one, so you hear. Mm -hmm. 
So it's this very lush sound and obviously you could put micro pitch before the delay but I like this order for this purpose. So first delay and then the delayed signal get pitched so it widens it even more makes it a little bit you know chorus effect because as you can see it's just a little bit of pitch shifting. It's basically like a chorus, but it just sounds a little bit different when I use it this mildly. So this is basically an emulation of a classic uh, Eventide harmonizer, which was widely used in the 80s just for this purpose. So to widen the sound, get this little bit out of pitch sound, which makes it kind of like chorus. And then reverb just a little bit there just to kind of smooth and, and glue those to together. Cool, so that's the sound. And like I said, live, if you want to create this, you would put these in the effect loop. So they are post preamp. And then you get this lush sound, because probably most of you know if you put delay in front of the amp, then the amp gets the delayed signal. It tick, 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 and it's kind of like, I mean, then you can get, you know, you choose the edge, like rhythmic delay sound if you want that. But in the effect loop, or like I did now, because I'm recording this, recorded basically dry, and then added these afterwards, so I could, you know, tweak them. Which I did, because I recorded first and then I, you know, tweak them. And yeah, so that, that's kind of the, the way. And again, I wasn't there <laughs> when they recorded. I was probably in kindergarten playing with small cars. <laughs> then, but this was just how I, in my opinion, am able to get a really similar tone. And you too. Okay, then a little bit about the the playing and arrangements. I mean, Iron Maiden is known that they, you know, harmonize things. There's lots of harmonies going on. Like, you know, my influence video, you know, third harmonies. This song, they actually didn't use third harmonies, but they harmonized stuff in fifths. So, small example, let's say we are in E. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth note of the E minor scale is B. And then what you get is your a B, a E5 chord, aka power chord. So basic power chord is root note and the fifth. And then if you wanna do a minor diet, you add the third note note which is G. And if you want to do a major third diet, you add the third note from the major scale. So, minor, major, fifth. And fifth is a cool chord because it fits both major and minor because the third note of the scale or the chord determines if the chord is minor or major. But fifth 
it's kind of like filler. It doesn't determine anything, <laughs> at least major or minor wise. So what they use here, so we, uh, we check uh, from the beginning what happens. So basically that melody is harmonized in fifths, so kind of like if you would play it with power chords, but you're playing it with single notes, up from the neck and do bending. So the kind of the root thing is like... Using natural E minor scale. This is in the key of E minor. And then the other guitar is playing it in fifths, but octave lower. And then halfway. Check out what happens. So, this guitar was played on the first round, the fifth harmony, lower, it moves. To play it octave higher, and this root thing, that continues the same, which I played on the video, same throughout, but the other guitar is switching, switching from low fifth harmony to high fifth harmony. So that's pretty cool. And then the rhythm guitars, well they're... <laughs> this chord progression is probably on 90% of Iron Maiden's <laughs> songs, because, you know, if it works, why fix it? <laughs> so, E, C, D. And sometimes you throw in a B and A, which they, they do on this. So the, the, the verse is basically like... And this kind of pull off, so from E, and you get an A inversion. And D. You know, classic and writing you know, rhythm. And this is important to how you play this, because if you play it with like. then it's kind of like, you know, Metallica stuff. And if you play it like. then it's something, <laughs> punk rock. But when you palm mute lightly, and the first one is kind of like not pointed. You kind of start chugging, ticky ticky, ticky, and very lightly pointing, using the fifth course. So that's the, because I've said this many times before. Part of the sound, the amps and the effects, they're part of the sound, but majority is these two, what you play and how you play. Amplifier just amplifies it, what you play. And then obviously you can shape the sound a bit with effects, like I have now. But if I will play this... It's not Maiden, but... This is Maiden. Okay. And then what happens, uh, well, the, the, the chord progression changes a bit. I mean, you probably could follow that from, from the video and listen to yourself, because it's basically these chords. Just, you know, use it a little bit in different order. And then comes the kind of like 
Pre-Chorus. So this is basic like A5, played like this, this is F5, octave higher, so there's the F, the fifth, and the octave. And then G, E, G. Like that, and I, I use a little bit. You can spice it up a little bit with the whammy. And then comes this melody thing, which is there's no harmony except what the bass creates. So the two guitars are playing exactly the same. So it starts with C. And the bass is playing C, and then it moves to A. Bass is playing A, and then the guitars move to E, but the bass is playing C, which creates a major third below. This one. And then the bass moves to A. Guitars do keep doing this. So it's like. Basically, fifth harmony below. So, that's the thing. So let's, let's listen to that. And oh, yeah, I almost forgot this. That's again harmonized in fifth. Cool. And then a verse, like I said. And these yellows, these are the, the guitar the guitar track that I recorded when I feel myself, but then I just divided it into different tracks because these are band like left, right, and then there's delay for the solo. So I just cut them to you know fit the, that I could get the right. Uh, Panning. Okay, and then the the so you don't always need two guitars to create harmonies. You can create harmonies that are harmonically rich also by taking advantage of bass. So in this case the guitars play exactly the same in unisono and the bass creates that harmony, major third and fifth harmony, which is pretty cool. And then the chorus. So what I did there to get this lush sound, so I played like E5, but I used like two octaves, so, so E5 has two notes, E and B. E, B, E, B, E, B. Then I play the C like this, because... So it's a C5, but just an inversion. Because, I don't know, it just sound, sounds like it's that like that on the album. 
with open strings, more lush sound. And then that's basically the, the chords and then there's And yeah, before it switches back to E, I use this, like D, very shortly. Because the other guitar is playing like normal fifth chords. And then this octave melody. So, again, it's about the arrangement to feel the sound, so, you know, when with E, the other is playing the other, and with C, the strings vibrate a little bit differently and stuff, you, you get a bigger, lusher sound. Okay, and then, after chorus, it's a... Uh, Unison on lick, so guitar and bass, they all play the same. Again in E natural minor. I mean, this could be cool to harmonize. Like... But, you know, they didn't do that. And then the solo, that's kind of interesting. I mean, the, the key is, for this song, is E minor, but the solo, the first part, it, it goes like this. So it kind of plays a E Phrygian lick but starts on a D. I mean, D, Dorian and E Phrygian are basically the same, depending again what's the relative key, that whatever. But since the sound is very Phrygian, so I think of this lick as E Phrygian lick. <laughs> Because E Phrygian uh, on the 12th position. That F there, because on natural minor it goes. But Phrygian. Small difference, but quite a big difference. So the scale I used, I used, uh, or at least I thought when I played that I'm playing E Phrygian, which is basically essentially, you could essentially you could think of it also as a G natural minor, because then the, the the this part you like. There I played basically like... Like G, natural minor, but then when you go up in the scale, when you come in an E, you're in a Phrygian mode. Okay, <laughs> sorry if I'm confusing, this is just the way I think about these things. <laughs> so, in a way, the first part is to simplify it, E Phrygian scale. Very, this kind of classical, a little bit like Eastern sounding. Randy Rhodes used this a lot. And then the chords change to like your standard. Basic E natural minor chords, so E, G, C, D. And then I started to play E Aeolian, which is E natural minor. Mm -hmm. 
So the solos, I didn't learn them note for note. I just listened uh, the song a few times and then just played something similar. So basically improvised first in E Phrygian and then in E natural minor, E Aeolian. A little bit similar licks, what the Adrian and, and uh, Dave Murray play. So, and then the song continues, but I, I didn't do it after. Then it actually changes key to F sharp. So this is very classic Iron Maiden. So when they solo, when like Dave is playing, it's like in this key or based on this scale or the chord progression. And then when Adrian or Janik or the other guitar player, then they either switch kind of the the, the scale that the, the chords are, and that way the you know scale you use when you're soloing, or then they change the key. So but on this one they did all of those. So first it's like E Phrygian, then it's like E Aeolian, then it goes to F. I don't actually <laughs> remember that because I basically when I programmed the drums I listened the song this far and I was like okay that's probably enough. It's over four minutes. But uh, now, if I remember correct, it, it could be F sharp Phrygian. But anyway, you, you get the, the basic idea. So, yeah, Iron Maiden. I mean, Maiden has been a huge influence on. on millions of bands and guitar players, you know, the use of harmonies. I first, when I heard Maiden, I, you know, those harmonies, like, what is this? I need to figure this out, how to do that on guitar. So, I learned a theory, like, oh, okay, they use this and that. And obviously, you know, In Flames, you know, took the harmony thing and did their own thing. I mean, I think Lizzie used harmonies, uh, Leonard Skinner, they used harmonies, so all those, you know, old bands. And it, it's a really cool way to widen your guitar sound and, 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 and stuff. And the, the, the galloping rhythms are really, really are made. And the <laughs> ECD chord progression, which is on most of their songs. There's nothing wrong with that. A great song is a great song, no matter, you know, because all you need is a three chord and a good attitude. So and a good melody, I must say. But yeah, so the sound, it's kind of, it's your basic martial sound. I mean, at least how I was able to create. And then these little post effects, what I used, which you could use if you have real stuff, like or live, you, you know, you will put this in the effect loop to create something similar, very lush tone. And the guitar synth thing, I guess they used that, but when you listen to the album, well, I think what they mostly used that, well, in the, in the beginning of this song, on the album version, there's this like drony A note. That could be a guitar synth. Uh, and kind of like the, this keyboard kind of, you know, pads that appear on the album, they're not so very down in the mix. Probably they used, you know, guitar seats for that. But as far as guitars go, they sound guitar to me with just a little bit of post effects added for that lushy, chorusy sound. Hey, hopefully this was interesting and informative and maybe you learned something about creating sounds and maybe a little bit theory, create harmonies and so on. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye.